All right, so this is six two total purchase price. So we're going to take what we did yesterday, calculate the sales tax, and now we're going to add it back into um, what we owe. So we're going to be looking at sales receipts and total purchase price. Um, here's a great question. How do the sales taxes that we pay go to the proper government agency? So we go in there, we pay 6% to the state, we pay 1.5% to the city, we pay 1% to the county. How does it all get to their proper places when, when we're at? Does it get from the cash register to its proffers? We have a guess. It's okay that you don't know. You know Trevor? Is what? I'm asking Trevor. Do you know Trevor? I don't know. Okay. Um, there is a great job um, out there if uh, you want to get a really good paying job. It's called an accountant. Oh, yeah. So what an accountant does is, it, is they keep track of the money you bring in and make sure you pay um, your employees the right amount, your... Um, and then your taxes to the right people as well. So when you're a business owner, you take in the money, and then you have to calculate, oh yeah, that's the 6%, and then you have to mail a check off to the state. You have to mail a check off to the county um, to pay your taxes. So we do it as um, individuals. We file our taxes once a year. Some businesses do it every quarter, which is every three months. Um, some businesses do it every um, six months, and I, because um, my dad works construction, he does his every six months, um, just to make sure that he doesn't get all the way to the end of the year and then have a tax bill that he can't afford. Um, so you don't you don't have to wait until the end of the year to pay off your taxes. All right, so total purchase price. Most stores give you a sales receipt, and that's R E C E I P. T. When I say this um, in my head, I say it receipt, um, but when I say it out loud, I say receipt. As proof of purchase, the sales receipt may be a handwritten sales receipt, um, <clears throat> which is what I give you guys when you buy tickets to um, homecoming or prom, um, or buy something from the student store, you guys get a handwritten receipt. Or it can be cash register tape. The receipt shows uh, the selling price of each item or service you purchase, the total selling price of all items purchased, any sales tax, and the total purchase amount. Note that the tax is computed using the combined state, county, and city tax rate. They're just going to do one percentage on your receipt. They're not going to divvy them up and show you what each percentage is. The total purchase price, which you guys are filling in in your notes, equals the total selling price plus the sales tax. And the formula for that is sales tax equals total selling price times the sales tax rate. We did that yesterday. Um, the total purchase price is your total selling price plus your sales tax. Oh, it's still loading. This is ridiculous. I'm fed up. Just count them. Two. Two students got stuck. Okay. So let's look at our buddy Mike here. Mike owns a tree trimming company. He purchased um, some items which are on the sales receipt. He checks the information on the receipt. The sales tax rate is 5%. What is the total purchase price? And when we're reading this receipt, if you look, one chainsaw at $539.95 is $539.95. Okay. Okay. We're buying twelve 
chainsaw bar oil containers. Each of them is $4.95, so the total um, is $59.40 just for the bar oil. We're buying two safety shops because um, I don't know anybody here has been chainsawing and shenanigans. Um, with any, yeah, when you're when you're sawing, it just comes all up on you, and it gets cray. So, um, each one is sixty-nine dollars and ninety-five cents. So the total is one hundred and thirty-nine dollars and ninety cents. We have two safety helmets. Each of them are forty-five dollars and ninety-five cents. That's um, a total of ninety-one dollars and ninety cents. Okay, so I'm gonna. I know the information is up there, but I'm going to scroll down so you guys can see and fill in the boxes below. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the total selling price. We're going to add each of those totals together so that we know our merchandise is totaling $831.15. So we fill that in here. Oh my gosh. And we write it down here. Then we're going to calculate our sales tax, which is 5% of 831.15. It's 831.15 times the 5% is $41.56. That goes right here. And then we're going to add those two together. When we add those two together, we're going to fill that in over here, as well as in our sales receipt. When we add the two items together, our tax and our total purchase price, we get eight seventy-two seventy-one. dollars Alright, this is my favorite part. It's the comparison shopping because I'm a super duper bargain hunter. Um, I want to make sure I'm paying the, you know, the very, very least expensive price I can possibly pay. Um, but sometimes when you're comparing a big container of something, a little container of that same amount. Sometimes you don't know, well, this is $10, but there's a gallon of it, and this is $5, because there's 16 ounces of it. Is that a good deal? And you're like, I don't know. So um, we break everything down into a unit price. Um, many items come in different sizes. What do you consider when deciding which size to buy? So um, I always think of this as in terms of shampoo because I live in a house with um, daughters and they, for some reason, use a lot of shampoo and conditioner. Um, yay for them for wanting to be clean. But I go through a, a whole lot of shampoo and conditioner in our house. Um, so is the bigger size a better deal? It depends upon what you're buying. Um, my uh, Mr. Mitch loves to buy the giant gallon of mayonnaise. And we're not like a big mayonnaise family, but every time we go by, we're at Costco, and we're walking by the mayonnaise, he's like, here you go. And we put the big jug of mayonnaise in our cart. Um, the, it is a better deal than the smaller jar. The unit price is, we get more, um, it's cheaper per ounce than the smaller one. However, what's the downside downside of buying a giant jug of something? Oh, we got to use it all to get your money's worth. Right, you have to use it all to get your money's worth. So if um, if you're not going to use all that mayonnaise, it's going to go bad before you use it all. Is it really worth it to buy it? Um, the other thing I want you guys to think about too, when it comes to size. Um, so I, I have good news, and if you guys want to share this with your parents, please um, feel free to do so. Someday, you're going to move out of your house, and you're going to have, you're going to get your paycheck, and you're going to be like, sweet paycheck. Then you're going to pay your rent, and you're going to pay your, for your car, and you're going to pay for your phone, and then whatever's left in your account at the end of all paying all your bills, you're going to try to go buy groceries or something at the store, to feed yourself. If you don't have enough in your account for the big jug of mayonnaise, you may have to settle for a smaller, cheaper jug 
to get you through to your next paycheck. So, you know, think about it. It may not be like, oh, I'm going to use it all. It may be, I can't afford a bigger container of it. Like, how often does the agent buy this? Just, um, Usually once a month. We end up making a lot of tuna sandwiches. And then I'll, um, <laughs> and then you can make your own. If you get your, the, the Hidden Valley flavor packets, the little, you can make your own ranch dressing out of the mayonnaise and milk. It's, it's not, it's good, but. All right. So, grocery stores often give the unit price for their products. And it's on, it is on next to the price. So if you go to the grocery store, it'll tell you how much per ounce you're paying or how much per um, granola bar you're paying. Um, unit pricing is a technique that allows shoppers to compare the prices of various items, use this information to determine which side of a product is the best buy based on price. So the unit price formula, you guys can write this in your notes, is price of an item divided by the measure or the count. So I want you guys to leave somewhere, put divided by. Because all we're doing, we take our money and we're dividing by the amount. And that's how it rolls out in your calculator. So for example, we have 55 <coughs> plates in our package. It's a dollar ten per to buy the package of 55 plates. So you take a dollar ten. Divide it by 55, and you end up with two cents per plate. So let's see how that works in this scenario. Buddy Shane bought 64 ounces of orange juice for $3.49, two liter bottle of bleach for $1.99, and a dozen ears of sweet corn for $3.50. What is the unit price? of each item to the nearest tenth of a cent. So when we go 349 divided by 64, our calculator spits us out 0 0.0545 dollars per ounce. It's asking us to round to the nearest tenth of a cent. So the pennies are right here. So we're going to round to the one right next to the penny. Because this guy is a five, our four rounds up to a five. And once again, on your quiz, you're going to have to input this amount correctly. And if you don't, you'll mark it wrong. How long is the quiz? How many? Six uh, questions. Oh, okay. And they're just like this. Bleach is one a dollar ninety nine per liter. I'm uh, sorry for two liters. So we're gonna divide a dollar ninety nine by two, and this one rounds perfectly. It doesn't have anything after the five, so this one is straight up. And then our ears of corn, three dollars and fifty cents for twelve ears of corn. We're gonna divide that. And we get point two nine one six. We're gonna round. To this one right here. Because this is a six, the one rounds up to a two.